What is up everybody, I'm hoping you're all well and it is time to say goodbye to the phase three of the MCU, the final chapter of the Infinity Saga. And while before we can drop in on some old faces and be introduced to some new superheroes, we must first drop in on our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and spooder. see how he's doing. The Spooder, the Spooder, the Spooder, the the spooder. spooder Man. Oh, I love Spooder mm -hmm. Man. So Shoot. we're gonna drop in once again on Spider-Man and see how he's doing. So let's talk about the movie. Spider-Man Far From Home. So Spider-Man Far From Home is the latest Spider-Man movie and it's the final chapter to the Infinity Saga. This time we see Spider-Man trying his hardest to try and get with Mary Jane. He really likes her, he's not too sure if she really likes him. However, while he's going on his school vacation around Europe, Nick Fury hijacks it because there's some elementals that have come from another universe due to the snap caused by Thanos that are just wreaking havoc over everywhere. And he has to team up with Quinton Beck, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, Mysterio, to bring them down. I loved this movie. It, now, personally for me, it was hands down, in terms of live action, my favorite Spider-Man film. Period. This this film did. I mean, like Homecoming was amazing, but this film did so many things right. There was like the choreography of the fights themselves were amazing. Visually, it was beautiful. Um, the character of Mysterio, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, was incredible I mean, because Jake Gyllenhaal is fantastic. Yeah, you, you don't I mean, you don't get Jake Gyllenhaal in a film for him to not do well in the film. Like, he he looked like he was having a lot of fun in the role. He looked like he was really soaking up everything that he had, he had to do. He clearly had a lot of chemistry with Tom Holland. Tom Holland as well as Spider-Man. He, he's the best Spider-Man yeah, ever. Yeah, he's the best Spider-Man. I, mean, I want to see him play this role for as long as he possibly can. I want to see him in his 80s, kicking the shit out of bad guys. <laughs> Putting his head out. Because I'd be happy with that. <laughs> that would bring me a lot of joy. Oh dear! Oh, my hips gone shit <laughs> out. Yeah, he's hands down the best Spider-Man I've... I think uh, well, he's not I think I know I've seen he's done much better in my opinion um, than both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield put together um, Andrew Garfield obviously see when it came to the Spider-Mans I think Tobey Maguire embodied Peter Parker more than he did Spider-Man and Andrew, Andrew Garfield, Garfield embodied Spider-Man Spider more than he did Peter Parker but Tom Holland just seems to encapsulate both aspects of this character perfectly yeah 100% yeah. he is too good at it he is, he's Too incredible. Good at it. And as you said, the, the reaction sequences in this movie felt a lot more. They flowed a lot better than they did in Homecoming, personally, for me anyway. But I feel like that's more because the director, John Watt, felt more at home. Yeah. He felt more comfortable with what he had. He was able to expand more and experiment more with what he could do. And in that, I feel the reaction sequences in this movie had a lot more to them. They felt a lot more intense. They felt a lot more. You felt a lot like Spider Man was actually in danger. Like the end fight itself. He's hands down one of the best fights I've seen in a Marvel thing. Like obviously Endgame, Avengers, their fights are massive, but as a solo film, the end fight was not only one of the most visually beautiful, but also because of the story that it took you along was one of the most important fights that I've seen yeah. in, in a film. You can really tell, like you said, he's, he's a lot more comfortable um, when he was directing this film yeah. compared to how he was last film. But you can tell not only is he more comfortable, but he's a lot more in love with this film. Like yeah. you can tell he had a lot of love for Homecoming. Um, but <laughs> so you never point at your awkward, films. Such an awkward little point. You never point at your films, so I thought I'd do it for you. No, you could tell obviously he loved Homecoming, but you could tell so much more. There was so much more passion. This this literally was his love child, and it it fully shows. Like the story was really, really good. I loved the story. I love, I love the whole thing of having different suits. I love how Happy was brought into that. Is a thing. Happy, I'm happy, so happy being that brought happy into the story was in amazing. Movie. Yeah, Happy is amazing. I love John Favreau. Considering spoilers for Endgame, most of this does take place after Endgame. We are seeing these characters deal with the death of Tony Stark at the end of Endgame. So. You've seen Spider-Man who looked up to him like a, like almost like a father, mm. and then you're having Happy Hogan come in. So I'm happy we've got Happy to stay in the movie. Are you happy got, with um, Happy? I'm very happy with Happy. Are you happy Happy? I'm happy that Happy is very happy in this movie. He seems happy. He is very happy. And, uh, he, spoilers. Uh, spoilers. Well, we'll give you to why he's happy. Well, it seems like very much of a trailer why he might be happy. Happy um, is happy <laughs> because certain things happened that made him happy, but Happy's not happy about Tony not being around that makes him unhappy, but he's happy with... Tom Holland being happy at the end of the film, which makes him happy, but he's also got some problems which make him happy. I'm happy with happy having all those things that make him happy, because it makes me happy. Hashtag happy's happy. 
Hashtag happy happy. <laughs> <laughs> so John Favreau in this movie, yes, was fantastic. As was Zendaya as Mary Jane. Like, I didn't see much of her in Homecoming. Obviously her character was a little bit secret in that film, although when you watch it, it does kind of make it obvious as to where they're going with her character. But the relationship between her and Peter Parker oh. in this movie oh. was genuinely Amazing. adorable. Amazing. It was awkward when it needed to be, but not too over the top that you felt, oh, this isn't really going well, we don't have any chemistry here. It was awkward in the sense that like it was very funny, they clearly both like each other in a certain way, so they do bounce off of each other really well. I bought into the relationship, I bought into Zendaya as Mary Jane. I'd like to see where they go with it. I 100%, and this this just gives credit to how well they did it, I 100% like relate to Spider-Man and Mary Jane on, on a spiritual, emotional, and literal level. Um, it's because we're both awkward. Huh? It's because we're, we're awkward around women. <laughs> when you like someone, you're really awkward. I did not think they did it too over the top. I thought it was very subtly done. I thought it was done at the right level. very grounded, very real. Yeah, it was... Like, to say that it's, it's fucking Spider-Man and there was giant weather monsters, the elementals, to say that they were in the film, that relationship was very grounded and that felt right. Like, I looked at it and just went, I wish I could have that one day. <laughs> Not only because I thought, wow, that's a really good like display of it, but only because I'm a bit jealous of Spider-Man because he's... He's getting someone I'm not, but we'll... Um, it's okay, we can gloss over that, you know, it's okay. We'll, um, uh, we'll gloss over that one, but um, if, you okay. wanna, if you wanna if you want to check me out, ladies, uh, <laughs> over at please, the over at the lever and Mr. JC, <laughs> uh, I'm desperate for attention, please, I'm begging you. <laughs> Just because he's begging, I might as well leave the link to his channels in the description box. And that you is how you really get your link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie, with the Mary Jane aspect and the elemental aspect, it was essentially a high school rom-com with some awesome superhero action yes. and they blended the two well together like it didn't feel messy it moved at a very nice steady pace picking up the pace when it needed to doing the more action heavy sequences and then slowing it down to a very nice easy pace when it was more focused on the friendship and the relationship between mary jane overall i fucking love this movie i thought it was fantastic mm. i prefer this movie a little bit more than homecoming and while you do say it's the best live action movie for yourself i personally still love the sam raimi spider-man 2 movie more fight than me. this one fight me i'm not gonna fight you over it <laughs> everyone has different opinions jack no that is true have your own opinion <laughs> i respect you entirely but, but if you i mean yes um but if you say that spider-man 3 is the best one or if god right. forbid you say amazing spider-man 2 is the best one then we are gonna have a fight yeah we can all do, we can all agree that those ones are not very good movies like spider-man 2 is your favorite film and i respect you for that and i genuinely do but if you like the amazing spider-man 2 fucking come at me <laughs> why are you starting on my on my subscribers because if they like the amazing spider-man 2 they need to get their asses handed to him this is i'm doing this I mean, for you josh I, I, I don't know, i'd say it in a nicer way i wouldn't threaten if you like Amazing Spider-Man 2, that's fine. You're wrong. But if you like Amazing Spider-Man 2... And we're coming for you. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. I've got you back. Now, without getting into spoilers, we're going to go into just one little thing. One tiny little issue that I had with this movie is that the uh, villains in this movie, or the main villain in this movie, isn't as well fleshed out as the, as the Vulture was, in my opinion. I thought the Vulture had a lot more to him. He had a very personal connection with Peter in the in Homecoming, whereas this villain didn't seem as fleshed out. Uh, I've done it wrong, I still love the villain, and I'm trying very hard not to say who the villain is. Um, but if, 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 if you, you know Spider-Man... If, if you are a very big yeah. Spider-Man slash Marvel slash comic fan, you will understand you will who we're talking who about. Yes. And if you're like us in the cinema, you'll see it coming from a mile away, but the way they did it was quite well. I thought it was great. The exposition dump, while I'm not a huge fan of exposition dumps, it seemed to make sense as to why they did it in that way. They tied in things from the previous MCU movies, and yeah, it made a very like, satisfying That's, that's the thing. I like how they brought back some characters from very, very old yes, Marvel films. Like, I'm not going to say who, but they, and you'll know who I'm on about, but they brought back a, just a very small character all the way from the original Iron Man, which I thought was fucking great that it they was. brought some of their old Again, cast like they said, what they said when we made this movie, it was going to tie in, it was going to, type a few loose ends that the other movies had left yeah. unanswered and they've done that well with this movie hence making it the last part of phase three the last part of the infinity saga i love this movie i've had a great time with it it was funny it was heartfelt it was incredibly action-packed john what did a great job of directing this movie like it oh, was yeah. felt a lot more at home with this and <laughs> the, yeah. Yeah. get it because it's Cause they're, it's they're far from home but he was at home funny <laughs> shut up <laughs> 
And then uh, the post credit scenes, which we won't spoil obviously for oh. you guys, amazing. There were moments where I wanted to jump with joy. It leaves what they're going to do with Spider-Man completely up in the air. I don't know what they're going to do with him now, which is incredibly exciting. I can't wait to see what we do next. The and leaves another thing, another thing to debate yeah. about with a very final end credit like, scene. Oh, uh, like, it's not a spoiler, but if you haven't watched the film yet, the two credit scenes that we get, because there are two, we'll admit it, there's two. I'm not telling you what they are. The first one, amazingly well done. They brought someone back that I never expected them to bring back and holy fucking shit that was amazing um, that was, it made me so happy it was it does not do the same thing but it made me feel eg like exactly the same as the Captain America one where he's doing the Oh, well, the video. Doing, uh, video, and he sits and down on his audience. chair. It felt like that because at the beginning it just felt like, oh, it's a nice little cute thing, and then, bam, that happened. Story-wise, that's gonna lift up so many possibilities in the MCU. It's gonna be amazing, and then. The second post-credit scene was hands down the most confusing one I've ever seen. That made me so confused it made me question a few things about the mcu as well and we can't we can't go into detail about it but i wonder if they're using the um, uh, that's what that's what i was thinking that's what yeah. i'm that's what i'm thinking yeah if you can lip read behind a, a hand good for you you have a weird fucking talent <laughs> message marvel um <laughs> but um yeah that that kind of led me to be like oh are they doing this because, way, because in a certain film, they made it look like that that wouldn't happen. Yeah, but the way, but the, ca now but the, way the characters it... acted in the end credit scene still made it seem like it wasn't going to happen. But see, the thing is, the end credit scene always end also matched up with something that makes sense for certain characters in you know the what? film. It's really, it's it's really difficult to talk about it because it's, it's a big, big spoiler. And... Um, it made, it made sense for the actual characters that were in this movie, but it, made, it puts into question the characters that they've been in the previous movies. Yeah. And that's all we're going to say now. Jesus Christ, um, that tan line can I just add? Four. Oh my god, you vain piece of shit. <laughs> I said tan line, I didn't say fucking. I mean, you literally went four, I just went like that with your arm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, rating. What are you going to give Spider Man Far From Home? Uh, you can find me for it five out of five. I'm oh, giving five, it a five, five out of five. Yeah. I have to 100% agree, it is 100% 5 stars. But the big question, Mr. Lima, does it get the Lima stamp of approval? Do you know what? You can have a drum roll, please. I'll put the drum roll sound effect in for you. Thank you, because at the moment it sounds really awkward and it's just silence. But it does have the Lima stamp of approval. Yay! Hey. So... Spider-Man Far From Home. Have you guys seen it yet? What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comment section below. See ya. Thanks to those for watching, guys. Thank you for Jack for joining me for this review. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel for more. Links to the Lima and Mr. JC in the description yeah. box below because he's a vain piece of shit who wants nothing but a shout out. That's why he featured in my videos. You don't actually care about the content. That's Whoa, the whoa I thoroughly enjoyed the Spider-Man film. Your content is so good. Thanks again for watching, guys. You guys are awesome, and I will see you all in the next video.